Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here, uh, back to do a what's been spinning video. This is where I kind of share with you what's been spinning since the last what's been spinning video. As always, I like to reiterate the beginning of these. Uh, these are just the albums that I actually set back and listened to from start to finish. Uh, kind of took everything in and not the albums or songs or things that I just kind of, you know, bounced around with hits here, streaming here, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, so yeah, let's kind of jump right into it. Uh, quite a bit of stuff. I've been spinning a lot over the past week or two. Uh, a few CDs here as well. And just so this doesn't end up being like a long, long video, uh, I'll talk about some of them a little bit. The ones that are pretty kind of big and common, I'll just skip over because you guys kind of know anyway. So start off with a few CDs and kind of talking about that, you know, Face Value by Phil Collins. This is a deluxe CD. You know, again, a classic. I'm sure you guys know all too well. Love listening to that. Sonically, just a great album. Um, Crisscross, <laughs> some of that 90s hip hop that I love so much. Uh, that was a fun revisit right there. I really want this on vinyl. I'm still trying to find a, a very nice copy of that to get in my collection at some point. Uh, Carbon Leaf, Indian Summer here. Another one I just hadn't spun in quite some time, so went back and did a revisit. Uh, I remember an old girlfriend of mine introduced me to to them and Pavarotti. Those were the, the two band, two artists that she introduced me to that I had never really listened to until I met her. So uh, I always think about her, you know, because she was she was cool. You know, we were friends a long time after we broke up and everything. And so uh, yeah, always a always a good one there. And Last CD, Jillian Welch, another one of my favorite kind of folky Americana, especially old school kind of Americana type of artist. Um, really wish they would get around to putting more of her stuff on vinyl, especially like her first three or four albums, which they did do one of them. Um, but yeah, just really, really fantastic. If you're not familiar with her, if you've ever seen the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Like pretty much all of her music would fit right into that movie. Matter of fact, I think she was on a couple of tracks in that movie on the soundtrack. So yeah, really fantastic. Always a great listen. If you haven't heard this album, the song Whiskey Girl, is definitely my favorite off of that one. And now let's move over to the vinyl. We'll start here with Patti Smith. This is Dream of Life. This is her release from 1988. Um, funny thing I always say about Patties, it's so weird. I always file her away in my punk section. That's where she goes. Even though like those that are fans of hers know that a vast, 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 vast majority of her music doesn't fit anywhere near the punk type. Matter of fact, when you listen to this, this is something more that would go right next to the bangles or, you know, just kind of like an 80s poppy type of pop rock type of thing. Um, but it's just something about her attitude and her personality is just always giving me a punk vibe and that's why i put her in my punk section but uh yeah fan fantastic album uh, definitely some of more of her mellow stuff it has a song dream of life which arguably is one of my favorite songs if not my favorite song by her and just a really really great great visit there so that's the one and only patty smith next here again one i don't have to say that much about because you, you guys all know mr ray charles the one and only you know and here you have stuff like um Hallelujah, I love her so, Mess Around, Marianne, uh, I Got a Woman, just all kind of crazy hits from the genius himself on that album. Uh, again, another one that you guys know all too well, Ride the Lightning, Metallica. Again, legendary thrash album right there. And probably the same with this one too, The Car, Shake It Up, another very well-known album. Like 1981 when this first came out. And of course, you know, you had the hit Since You Gone and the title track, Shake It Up. Uh, which is probably featured in almost every 80s teen movie that came out during that time frame. Uh, it's like you were going to get Shake It Up or I Know What Boys Like by The Waitresses. But that was going to show up somewhere in every 80s movie back in the day. But a really cool album. The one thing that always sticks out with me about this is I think it's between on the, the side two and they go from the song Think It Over to Maybe Baby. You know, it's it's stereo. And so what you have is one song playing on one channel while the other song is coming in on the other channel. And every time I hear that, it always messes me up for a moment, um, even though I know it's there and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, next year we have Of Monsters and Men. Uh, this is their song, my head, my song, but um, excuse me, their album, My Head's Like an Animal. Um, really cool stuff. This is their 2011 release. 
you know, and I've always said on this, the songs are good and kind of fun, you know, especially for just kind of what was going on in the, uh, like 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. But it's, uh, is it Nana or Nana? I can't, can't even pronounce her last name, but her voice just makes me melt with the way that she delivers. It, it's kind of like a kind of this Celtic, almost kind of soulful in some places in a kind of a weird way. And just there's kind of an innocence to it. There's also kind of like a, a grown element. It's it's really hard to describe. It's just something about the way that she delivers a line. Just, oh, I just feel it all over. Just really, really awesome stuff. And it makes me really love this, this, uh, this album. So really good stuff there. Almost say the same here too with the Sundays. You know, another voice that just makes me melt to no end. Uh, this is the album Blind from 1992. Again, just fantastic album. Uh, even just the sound of this is almost the blueprint for me when I think about what does 90 alternative kind of pop rock really sound like? Like, how do you define it? Like the sound and feel of this album totally defines it. And, uh, and all their albums were great. You know, I wish they would have got around to putting out more, but I think they only did like three total. I mean, just one of those groups I would love to have just six, seven, eight albums from them before things kind of went the way they did. But really, really good stuff. Another legendary one, Booker T and the MGs, Green Onions. Again, one I feel like I don't have to say much about because that's just such a classic, a beautiful pressing there. Uh, Berlin, Count to Three and Pray. This is their release from uh, 1986. Of course, Berlin, one of the you know the big 80s kind of new wave pop rock bands. Uh, which is kind of what you get on here is a lot of pop rock type of stuff, new wave, I should say, rock kind of stuff. But of course, you do have the gigantic hit off of here, Take My Breath Away, which really kind of threw them into the stratosphere with the whole, uh, you know, Top Gun thing and everything. But yeah, another fantastic legendary band from that 80s new wave time period. And then you have Free, Tons of Sod. Really, really awesome album here. One that I kind of forget about until I go back to it. But just a great in your face classic rock type of album just great hard classic rock and of course anytime you have paul rogers at the helm doing vocals just you know one of the best kind of blues rock vocalists you know you know it's going to be golden so a uh, fantastic one there uh mike post i went into my compilations and uh pulled out a little mic um Again, just one of the guys has just written some of the most amazing television theme songs. You know, stuff like Greatest American Hero, the theme song to the, the show White Shadow, Magnum P.I., The Rockford Files. And, of course, my absolute favorite, which is the theme song, The Hill Street Blues. Just a beautiful instrumental piece that just, I mean, I don't know why that, that makes me feel so much, but I, that, that's just an awesome, awesome piece of music. So, I mean, so Mike Post is an absolute legend. Again, another one I have to describe that much or anything. Credence, Clearwater Revival. This is Chronicles, or 20 Greatest Hits. Only thing I say about this is, like, we all know all the Credence songs. We've heard them a million times. Uh, you know, we know them inside and out. And even then, when you go back to Credence after not listening to them for a while and throw them on, it's just like, man, these guys were good. <laughs> Always a great refresher on them. Uh, the Isley Brothers, Go For Your Guns. Another legendary kind of R&B band. I say actually R&B kind of funk. Um, and that's kind of what you get off of this. So, you know, again, a lot of great stuff here. Um, like Footsteps in the Dark, which was, uh, you know, actually the beat that was sampled by Ice Cube. Um, what else is on here? A Voyage to Atlantis, which arguably is my favorite song by them. But the best version of that song that made it my favorite song I don't think it's ever been recorded because it was a live version that they did on Sinbad SummerSlam. It was a concert that they did. And the live version they did, they slowed it down and mellowed it out a little bit. And of course, Ron Isley had the most amazing, like Hendrix type of guitar solo at the end of it. But I don't think that was ever put on CD or anything. So I don't know if you can actually get it anywhere. But if you get a chance to ever look that up on YouTube here, definitely check it out. Uh, Midnight Oil, Diesel and Dust, another classic from 87. Uh, of course, remember the big hits off of here, Beds Are Burning and The Dead of Heart, two huge hits back in the, the mid to late 80s there. 
Collective Soul, Seven Year Itch, another you know kind of nice greatest hits album. They've been doing a great job of reissuing all the Collective Soul stuff over the past couple of years. If you don't have anything else, this Seven Year Itch is just kind of a nice, simple L one LP with uh, with all their hits with stuff like you know Shine, Precious Declaration, The World I Know, December. I mean, just a lot of great stuff on that album. So definitely one of those those awesome bands from that that time period. Motley Crue, Shout of the Devil. Again, one I have to say much about. You guys know this album inside and out. It's always a hard hitter there. And one of my favorite sayings, Don't Sleep on Pat. Pat Benatar, one of my absolute favorite 80s female artists. Um, and on here, you know, pretty much all the greatest hits that you would expect. You know, Love is a Battlefield. Hells for Children, We Live for Love, Shadows of the Night, Hit with Your Best Shot, We Belong, Invincible, Heartbreaker, and on and on and on and on. Really, really great LP right there. I got a feeling they'll be re reissuing this sometime soon because those actually aren't very easy to find right now. And then talk about another awesome queen, uh, Aretha Franklin. You know, this is kind of a two LP greatest hits from her. This came out in 2021. Um, a lot of the stuff, again, you would expect on here. My only issue with this particular album, or these, this set, if you will, is number one, the song You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman is only a live version. To not have the studio version on a greatest hits by her is just absolutely ridiculous. And the other thing, too, is, you know, they mix stuff like, you know, stuff you would expect to have, respect, chains of fool, um, something he can feel, think, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then like here and there, they threw in like some gospel stuff that she did. And it just, it doesn't flow. And, and not because of like gospel R&B, but the recordings themselves just, it's its just, it's, it's weird. It, like it, it just, it, it's almost like when you're listening to it, you have to go and adjust your volume and adjust things for the gospel song. And then have to come back and readjust it for you know, the studio versions of like Think or whatever. It just, it doesn't flow well in that regard. But I mean, as far as song for song, you know, great stuff. That's just the one little complaint that I have about that, if you want to call it a complaint. Molly Hatchet, Jukebox Saloon. Another great, great album here. I'm not a huge Molly Hatchet fan, mainly because they tricked me so, so bad early on when I started collecting vinyl, when I would grab a Molly Hatchet album and think, Oh, this must be an awesome hard rock or metal album because of the covers. And then, of course, you were completely fooled. But uh, this one is cool because they basically just did a bunch of covers. You know, Sharp Dressed Man, The Boys Are Back in Town, Bad to the Bone, uh, Wild Horses by the Stones, uh, Mississippi Queen, Free Bird Back in the USSR. You know, classic songs. And they just kind of, you know, classic rock them up. So a uh, really cool album. Definitely worth the check out there. And then Kansas, this is their release from 1975. I hadn't gone back to this in quite some time and really forgot how proggy this album was. But uh, kind of a great revisit. Another one of those great albums that, you know, when you're flipping through your collection, you're like, huh, I'm not recalling everything on that. You can almost kind of experience it for the first time again. Then a little Krungman here. This is their release from 2019. Uh, this is definitely, I think, one of their most mellow releases. It's kind of all instrumental, nothing overly complex or anything like that. Just one of those kind of throw on, you know, mood, background type of type of albums. And um, and that was a good revisit. Donna Summer, I remember yesterday from uh, 1977, I believe, um, you know, queen of disco. Love Donna. I always have loved her. Um, and of course, the big hit she had off of this one was I Feel Love, uh, which is just, you know, it's just Donna, it's just freaking awesome. And that song always makes me think about that intro type of keyboard thing or whatever that it was doing. That was the intro that they always used to use for wrestling at the chase when I was a kid and used to watch wrestling all the time. So every time I hear that song, I just have like these crazy flashbacks to my childhood and us going up the street to the arena to watch the, uh, the wrestling at the chase. <laughs> Stone Temple Pilots. This is that Greatest Hits album that they put out in 2003. Uh, this came out as a two LP, but three sides. And if you don't have any other STP in your collection, this is definitely a solid one to have because it has all their hits on here. Uh, you know, Vaseline, Wicked Garden, Big Empty, Plush, Creep, uh, Sex Type Thing, and on and on and on. 
thing I've always had an issue with with Stone Temple Pilots, and, and don't get me wrong, they are my favorite of the grunge bands when it came to, you know, the Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and Nirvana and all that stuff and all that was happening in the early 90s. Stone Temple Pilots are still my favorite of, of the, that era, if you will. But I do hate the fact that they never titled the songs anything that related to the chorus of the song to, you know, because back in the 90s when you're trying to find a song somewhere and you don't know what the title of it is to ask for and they're making the title totally different from what you're hearing in the song, it can piss you off. But you don't have Google and Spotify and all that stuff back then. But uh, that's the only complaint. Other than that, Stone Temple Pilots are golden. Uh, 10,000 Maniacs, you know, the one and only Natalie Merchant, which, you know, again, makes this album. Like, there's no songs on here. I mean, the good songs, but nothing that just, like, blows you away, with the exception of her vocal delivery, as always. I mean, just fantastic stuff. There was a release from 1989. Little Tommy Two Tone had to go back to some more eighties fun there. Eight six seven five three zero nine, a classic track off of there in the early eighties. They came out in eighty one. Another legendary album here, Nine Inch Nails, Pretty Hate Machine, definitely my favorite album by them. Um, you know, one of the ones where I talk about side one just being the absolute killer. You know, Head Like a Hole, A Terrible Lie, Down in It, uh, Sanctify. You know, on and on, just fantastic fantastic album still my favorite by them and just kind of a beautiful og copy there which is nice little nectar you know kind of a proggy classic rock kind of mixture there hadn't spun this in a while so gave that a spin that's a release from 74 as well as the one and only kenny rogers this is 21 uh 21 number ones and yeah, I mean, Kenny is Kenny. Just all the fantastic stuff here. Such a smooth, great listen. And of course, my favorite song by him off of this is Love Will Turn You Around. Never get tired of listening to that song. Just such a fantastic track by Kenny. And we'll follow him up with little Lainey Wilson. This is her newest release. Um, just one of my favorite modern day country artists. I mean, just, just fantastic. Again, I think I talked about that recently in another video when I first got it. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Black Rain, another one of his albums that maybe kind of got a little forgotten about uh, in his catalog, I think, but a uh, really solid album, too. Uh, you know, had the, I guess the single off of this was I Don't Want to Stop, which is one of my favorite Ozzy's tracks from kind of the later part of, latter part of his career. Uh, I do think it's a two LP set. I do think there's about three or four songs on here that are kind of filler that really could have been left off and it would have been just like a very, very solid album all the way through. But I'm never going to complain about, you know, getting more stuff from a legend as opposed to less. So great, great stuff there. Little Bob Dylan Greatest Hits. Of course, that's one you guys know about all too well. Uh, Method Man, Methodical here. Another great one. Uh, you know, one of the prime members of the Wu-Tang Clan. Definitely my favorite member of the Wu-Tang Clan. This is 1994 solo release. You know, it had stuff like Bring the Pain and a number of other things off of here, which is freaking awesome. Love kind of the mix on this album, too, as opposed to being kind of sharp and crisp and all of that. Like, the beats are very murky. There's not a lot of, like, very clear-cut distinction between beats, if you will. And even his vocal is kind of, for, I'm trying to describe a feeling, kind of, a little watered down underneath the beats so his vocals aren't very clear and up front but it just kind of brings like this cloud and thickness to it that that was intentional that i think is pretty awesome but if you sit there and especially listen to his lyrics throughout here i mean just yeah meth is meth is the man uh last two natasha bedingfield unwritten another classic here uh, what, what, yeah, classic for the early 2000s from like a pop dancey type perspective. Uh, the song, of course, uh, the album, excuse me, the song These Words and the title track Unwritten were definitely the two big, big hits off of that. And last but not least, we'll finish it up with the Bangles. You know, their classic from 1985. Um, you know, Manic Monday, Walk Like an Egyptian and all kinds of great stuff there. Just one of the awesome female bands that made made the 80s so fantastic so so there you go vc uh that's what's been spinning as always appreciate you guys stopping by let me know if there's anything inside of here that you dig and uh we will talk to you soon
All right, take care, guys.